So I want to do something a tad bit different today that I normally do. I don't think I've ever made a video in the tiny house after dark. But I can guarantee you somebody's going to complain that I don't have good enough lighting. Forgetting that they just came to an off-grid channel where lighting is pretty limited. We don't need lighting. We're kind of lucky that we don't have those old-fashioned kind of lanterns. But we do use lanterns. They're the new kind of lanterns. They're the rechargeable kind. This one doesn't actually work anymore, but it's identical to the one behind the camera lighting my face right now. It's kind of the thing about the off-grid channel is when you're on YouTube, the audience expectation still expects high-quality videos as though that you're in a studio. So when you see these young kids on off-grid channels with the thumbnails of the scantily clad females, I've watched this one and she goes shirtless all year round. This is the reality. That is fake. This is reality. I know that when you dream about living off grid, you dream about that. The highly edited and the highly narrated videos. They're 30 minutes long with quality production. But this is the reality. I thought about doing it with my little headlamp, which is the way I normally light the, the stove. I don't usually use the lantern very often. Now, the reason I'm doing this at night is well, one, it's getting chilly in here. It's about 65 degrees. Thought I could do a video. I had actually planned to do this video earlier today. I woke up this morning with 75 degrees, which is, it's, this has been a really odd fall. Normally we start the wood stove in October and it's going three, two to three times a day every day. I didn't even light it today. Got up at five o'clock, it was 75 degrees in here and the temperature was steadily dropping all morning long. So when Carolyn got up, I thought, well, I'll wait until it gets down into the 60s, you know, 65 or something, and I'll light the wood stove. Well, it started going back up, temperature in the house, so it was 71 all day. Normally, I try to get my videos edited by 2 p.m. every day. Well, here it is about 7 p.m., and I haven't even gotten the video recorded. To me, the wood stove is a thousand times better at night. It, it puts you to sleep, just the beauty of the, the wood stove. Now people say, it's carbon monoxide. Well, it's not carbon monoxide. We have two carbon monoxide detectors in here. It's not carbon monoxide. I believe, just my theory, that this these new modern wood stoves, I guess I should back up a little bit, they're super efficient. And so what we have here is we have these air tubes up here at the top, there's three of them. And those air tubes heat up. And so when the smoke hits those air tubes, it ignites into a blue flame. And I, I do think that blue flame must have some sort of light emission that helps you fall asleep because it, it happens every time. It just instantly just relaxes you. This one's a few years old now, so it's only 85% efficient. I think you can get them up to 90, 95% efficient now. And the, my thinking on that is I'm getting 85% of the heat out of the wood stove, out of the wood. What happens is, is when, when you have a non-efficient wood stove or you're burning wet wood, well, if you're burning wet wood, you're, you're only getting about, I, I think 30% efficiency. It's really low because you're using 70% of the heat to heat up that water and to evaporate it, to get it out of there, which causes creosote, which stains everything up. But when you're doing 85% efficiency, all the smoke is getting burned up, at least 85% of it. You can't see smoke coming out of the chimney anymore. It, it looks like a regular gas furnace chimney is what it looks like. That little heat waviness, I'm sure you've seen that before. It's all you see out of it. You don't see smoke, it, unless you're just starting it up. When you start it up, you leave the door open for 15 minutes and the air tubes aren't hot enough to burn the smoke yet. So smoke will go up. It is so critical to have dry firewood. It needs to be 20% or less. This is oak, so it takes forever to dry. We also have some hickory. This is three years in the drying process now. And even last year, I was getting some staining on the glass telling me it had water in it. It wasn't enough to, to cause a creosote problem in the chimney, but I was getting a little every now and then. And that was two, two years of cure time. That means it was, it was still a little green. But at three years, it's very dry. I'm not getting any staining on the window. You go watch YouTubers who are sitting in front of a wood stove. Their window is all stained up with creosote. 
and you'll even ask them, do you dry your firewood? Oh yeah, I have a moisture tester, which I do too. But you can tell they're not. The only thing I have a problem with on the window is there, that a little bit of a dust. I'm assuming when I first close the window, that everything's trying to even out, and so the air tubes aren't burning quite efficiently just yet. I might close it a little too soon. It's not hot enough in there. So that smoke kind of collects on the window, but it's not wet. So I take a, a sock, an old sock, the only one's got a hole in it, wipe off the window, it's cl clean as new. But when you have that creosote on there, it's stained. So you take a little water on your sock, put a little ash on it, and that ash does take it off. That's about the best thing I've found. Now you'll notice I don't have a flapper valve here. That is per code. The, the way you control the temperature is with that right there. You don't use this because what happens is everybody will say, but that keeps the heat in the house. No, it doesn't keep the heat in the house. Heat rises. You're not gonna keep heat from doing this thing. That's physics. <laughs> it's the law of the universe. You're not gonna make that change. What you're doing is you're restricting airflow. And so when you're restricting airflow, you're restricting the ability of these tubes to work correctly. So on these new efficient wood stoves, don't use a flapper, don't even put it in. It actually says in the instruction book that federal regulation does not allow it. So if your contractor was to come in and put it, your chimney and your wood stove in, they can't put that flapper in there. And I, I know these people who say, I've been burning firewood for 30 years. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, 30 years ago, internet was not the way it is today. It didn't have YouTube and a lot of people didn't even have internet and uh, when they did have an internet it was dial up and AOL and all that stuff. Technology changes over time so uh, instead of telling me what you did for the last three years this is the new technology. This is so much better. I remember the old technology. I was alive. I had a wood stove when I was a kid. My grandparents had wood stove. Parents had wood stove. I know they were terrible. This isn't. But you got to have dry firewood. You got to follow the instructions. And when you use it correctly, this thing puts out an amazing amount of heat. So this year has been pretty warm. Uh, and that's the funny thing is all the meteorologists have been saying this is going to be the worst winter of all times. Well, so far, not so bad. I mean, it could get worse. But last year we got down in the negative temperature. So I don't see how getting much worse than that. That was pretty chilly. And two years ago, it was in negative temperatures for two weeks. So if we go to negative temperatures this year, it's gonna be like every other year, except we've had a longer heat, hot temperature range here into November. So I'm gonna get this thing loaded up and I've got some wood pre-staged. Now you can see the, the wood on this is, it's not even big as my arm and I have skinny arms. So I, we're gonna call the in and out here, north and south. I'm gonna put a couple pieces north and south right here on the bottom. It does say about bark. You, you want to have your wood split. You don't want to put regular pieces that have bark all the way around it. It just doesn't burn very well. And I imagine, even when I was a kid, it didn't burn well. So if you split it, it burns better. So I tried to put the bark, you see how I did that? Since it has bark on there, I tried to put it on its side, like that. That way, the flame will hit on this and, and kind of burn it from this side up. But if I put the bark on the bottom, this will never burn. If I put it on top, it's gonna to really struggle and we won't ever get any heat. But if I put it on the side, it always seems to do a little better. Now I got some kindling, again, just oak. We'll throw that right in the center of the two pieces. And then I'm gonna take some really skinny but long pieces and I'm gonna run it east and west. And then again, I got some shorter pieces, but a little bit thicker. Again, I'm gonna stack those north and south and then one more piece that will go east and west i know you're going to see it in the dark very well but there's some fire brick here inside you don't want to go any higher than the fire brick you don't want your wood hitting those air tubes you also want to be careful that you're not having your north and south wood leaning because if this log were to break, which it will, your wood could slide back into the glass. Now, what I use is a blowtorch. 
And I know the macho men of the world are going to say, no, you need to use newspaper. What are you going to do in SHTF? Well, just like you, it won't be newspaper. I'm going to take little pieces of shards of wood and I'm going to be rubbing two sticks together. But like I said in the last video, my job is, uh, in order to be a man, is to take care of my family. And when the family says they're cold, I better get some fire in here so they warm up. Uh, instead of sitting here, I'm going to do a newspaper. That's how real men do it. Well, I don't even know if anybody really noticed, but there's really not too many newspapers around, you know, with the actual paper. So you, it's like that 30-year concept. I've been doing this for 30 years. Well, I, I guess you time travel to get your newspaper. So we're going to light that kindling with this torch. Now, people have told me that they're, they're a little scared of the torch. Uh, it's just not that hard to use. It's got a little knob here and a little clicker, and it lights right up. It's not going to blow up on you. I've never heard of any of them blowing up. It'll take, I don't know, less than a minute to get to this thing up and roaring. Now, the thing is, that's because the firewood's so dry. I hear people say in the comment section all the time, but at night, you want to put a piece of wet firewood in there so you got coals in the morning well first two things it's gonna stay warm all night long this thing keeps us warm for about eight hours so I don't have any worries about getting cold in the middle of the night unless we're back in the negative temperatures in that case Carolyn usually starts the wood stove about midnight one o'clock but the other thing is, is when you have dry firewood it lights up like a match so you don't need the coals you can do it this way otherwise you're doing it the old-fashioned way and you're using the billow to blow air in there so what's the difference the argument that I, I learned that I finally won with somebody is ah you've convinced me I think I'll drive the firewood because the window stays clean it's just so much better when you got a clean window these stoves are just so beautiful now I've made many videos in the past about municipalities banning these things and, and wood stoves, not necessarily the EPA efficient wood stoves. They're banning them. More and more of them are. Some states have. I think Oregon, somehow or another, I, they have their own regulations that are more strict than the EPA. People will tell me that they're just going to make their own wood stoves. And the problem is not everybody knows how to make their wood, own wood stoves. I want this thing to last 20 years, 30 years. I even painted it just recently. I showed you I painted it. You're not going to be able to see it in the dark. Okay, so I don't know how long I took, but the problem was is I kept moving around because I was talking and wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. So I'm going to close the door, but not all the way. I'm going to leave about a finger space. Got my finger in there. Now I'm going to leave this open for about 15 minutes. Now you'll see that that smoke is starting to cloud up the window. That's because the air tubes aren't hot enough to burn the smoke. So that's why we're leaving it open, so it can get hotter. What you're trying to do is you're trying to heat up the chimney. As that chimney heats up, it starts to draw. Think about it, heat rises. So as it's rising, the air temperature and air and vacuum is creating a vacuum, sucking more air into it. It's drawing up the chimney. So you're trying to get that hot. You close this up, you'll put the flame out because you're not getting enough air through it while this is heating up. I think it's like 150 degrees right here at the base. I've noticed that is when it starts to draw up really well. I don't close it. I haven't measured it this year, but last year I used to measure it every time I lit, lit it. But I would put my laser pointer, my laser thermometer right here on the top of the stove and it'd be about 500 degrees about when I closed it. Now I think about that and that's kind of like the temperature of your oven in your kitchen, 500 degrees. As everybody is telling me that they're gonna build their own wood stoves, what happens is, is the EPA puts more and more regulations on these wood stoves, driving the price up so other people can't afford it. And this is why we have such a conflict in this, this country. There are people in municipalities who don't want you to run a wood stove, your neighbor. So they call City Hall up and say, hey, John's burning the wood stove, and that's it. Flaring up my asthma. So next City Hall, politicians do what they do. And so they say, hey, Jane complained that John was running that wood stove. Well, we'll just ban them. So they ban them, tell you to take it out of your house, give you tickets if you write it. Can't. There's two types of people in this world. One that loves government control and ones that don't. We're, they're just not going to get along.
I just want to have a wood stove and be left alone. So in order to be left alone, maybe I'll do it this way. And I just watched a video on about sovereign citizens. I get that in the comment section. I'm, I'm digressing, but it's, it's kind of related. Sovereign citizens don't believe that when they claim that they're sovereign, they can't be harassed by police anymore or IRS or anybody. They're sovereign. They don't have to do anything. Well, I was watching a, a lawyer today on, on YouTube, and he was trying to look up sovereign citizen law and case law and all this history. And at the end of the video, he says, I realize you're all a sovereign, but, and, and you can't be harassed by police, but there sure are a lot of you in prison. Same thing. We can claim freedom all we want. Until you realize you're not free, you'll never be free. As soon as you realize you are not free, you'll be able to figure out how to be free. So if you'll click this up next box to take you to a video where I was talking about being prepared without being a prepper. So if I can inspire you to enjoy your evening, sing, live your dreams. Thanks for watching.